I'm Marcy Billen with Rui Team Realty and Keller Williams Millenix here in Norman, Oklahoma. Thanks so much for watching today. Welcome to our channel. So today I have a special guest on and we're going to talk about conventional loans versus FHA loans. So stay tuned. You don't want to miss anything. Have you subscribed to our channel yet? So each week I put out content videos about Oklahoma real estate, travel and food in the area as well. And you don't want to miss anything. So make sure you hit subscribe. All right. So I'm here today with Paul Edwards and Paul is a mortgage lender here in Norman, Oklahoma. And we have a few questions we want to ask him because a lot of the questions we get are around what type of loan um, our buyers should be getting whenever they're purchasing a house. And that's not a question I can answer because I'm not a lender. I'm a real estate agent. So the first question that I have for Paul here is um, what effect does a credit score have, let's say, on a conventional loan? It's a great question. Um, so conventional is a lot more sensitive to credit score than say an FHA. As a lender, what we notice is that credit scores impact uh, the interest rate, but also the mortgage insurance cost. So that's where you can see these stark differences. Conventional, you can see the cost of mortgage insurance or a conventional loan be twice as high sometimes compared to an FHA depending on credit score. So that, that's in a nutshell how credit score can impact the terms. But in general, that is what we look at. We look at, you know, lower credit scores are more beneficial with FHA just based off the terms, meaning lower interest rate, cheaper mortgage insurance, versus conventional is more beneficial for a higher credit score because again, better, better interest rate and cheaper mortgage insurance. Okay, so what would you say a target um, credit score is on an FHA then? Considering minimum down payments, usually when you're in the 700s, conventional can be stronger versus being in the 600s, FHA is strong. In general, that's what we kind of see. Let's move on to appraisals here. So of course, for every loan that you get from a bank, typically there's gonna be an appraisal. So is an appraisal different on a conventional loan versus an FHA loan? Much different. FHA is notoriously stricter on property or collateral. And, and with good reason. I mean, FHA, the spirit behind it is they want a good home for that FHA home buyer. They, they, they want a good quality home. So the spirit behind it's good. Uh, conventional can be, you know, a lot, I, I'd almost want to say relaxed at times, but not too much, uh, you know, always at the judgment of the appraiser. But certain cosmetic things might not be a big deal on a conventional loan, whereas they could be a bigger deal on FHA. Example that I like to make on that is like a cracked window, right? So if you've got a cracked window pane, on FHA, they're very likely going to want that replaced. Whereas conventional, you can sometimes get away with it. Just depends on how bad the crack is. Another thing uh, that you know is is kind of more popular with conventional, and there's no guarantee on this, but it can come up. Conventional loans sometimes don't even require an appraisal, even if it's a purchase or refinance. Now again, there's no way for us to predict that being available. But it's only a conventional loan option. FHA is never going to issue a property inspection. Okay, Paul. So as a realtor, one of the first questions that new clients will, um, that I ask new clients whenever they sit down with me for their initial buyer consultation is how much money they have allocated to purchase a new home. So, or a new to them home. So do you help them with that? Do you help them understand how much money they may need for like down payment and closing costs? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, that's something that comes up quite a bit because it's something us lenders have to actually talk to. You know, some people might think, well, as long as I've got the money, I should be good. Right. Well, um, from a lending perspective and an underwriting perspective, we do need to know where the money's coming from, the amounts and we got to document. So it's, it's a very big uh, part of what we do when we're calculating what we need to verify. Right. So what we look at as a lender in a sense, is kind of two numbers. One is what is our down payment amount 
And then the other number is what's our closing costs amount. And so when we look at those amounts, say, say for down payment, that's typically done in a percentage. And to talk about minimum down payments, FHA, minimum down payment on a standard FHA loan is going to be 3.5%. Conventional is a little different. The standard down payment, minimum down payment for a conventional loan is 5% unless you're a first-time home buyer. If you're a first-time home buyer on conventional and you meet you know, certain education requirements, like you have to take a home buyer education course, then you can do 3% down. So being a first-time home buyer has a perk on conventional that's not really there on FHA. So that's one number we look at. Now, the other number, closing costs. Closing costs, they're, they're a combination of a bunch of numbers. Effectively, you've got your bank charges. You've got third-party services you cannot shop for, one of which would probably be an appraisal. And then third-party services you can shop for, so your home inspection, your title company, your termite inspection, things like that. Uh, and then government charges. Give, given how many different sources there can be for closing costs, homeowner's insurance, that's always the biggest line item. It's hard for a lender to always predict exactly what your closing costs are going to be until you identify a specific property. So most lenders will be kind of conservative in their estimates up front. But there's something else that you can have happen too, especially when working with a great realtor uh, like Marcy, that you might have the ability to negotiate the seller to pay some of your closing costs. But there's limitations, right, depending on the loan program. So the limit that us lenders have on a conventional loan, you can only have a seller pay up to 3% of the purchase price for your closing costs, unless you do about 10%. Down. Mm -hmm. Then it goes up to 6%. Whereas FHA, always 6%. And what does that mean? Well, what that means is that in general, when doing a minimum down payment, you're able to ask for more help from the seller with an FHA loan than you are with the conventional. So then we look at those two numbers, down payment and closing costs. In a perfect world, sometimes FHA can offer a lower bottom line if you're able to have your closing costs covered and negotiated in. At the end of the day, what's really important is just start that conversation with the lender. Let us help give you these conservative estimates for numbers so that you can plan better. And then, of course, always listen to your realtor whenever it comes time to make offers so that you can make a realistic offer and hopefully a good, you know, good amount of seller concessions. Gotcha. So you're saying that on an FHA loan, then the seller can pay up to 6% of the total purchase price in closing costs for the buyer, right? That's correct. As long as there's sufficient amount of closing costs to be covered. You know, another thing that can happen is if you negotiate in, say, eight grand of concessions from mm -hmm. the seller, but your closing cost is only, say, $6,000, then you can only use $6,000 of those concessions. You're going to not get the full benefit of the end. So you can't get that money in cash back? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Okay, and then on a conventional loan, the seller can pay up to 3% unless you're putting 10% down on a conventional loan. Correct, correct. Sometimes, and this is not how the numbers work, sometimes the way I like to think about it is if you're a first-time home buyer on a conventional loan and your minimum down payment's 3%, and then the seller agrees to say, I don't know, 3% of the purchase price and seller concessions, in a way, and this is not exactly what's going on, but in a way, the seller's covering the amount equal to your down payment, and then you've got leftover closing costs to handle. So it's just kind of how the numbers work in a sense. Okay, so you've talked a little bit about mortgage insurance, or you've called it PMI. So ex explain what that is. So mortgage insurance is something that's required to be on loans, by and large. There are some cases where you won't have it. The most common is 20% down, down payment, when you're doing a conventional that, that's kind of your example of not having it. But again, by and large, most loans us lenders do, they have mortgage insurance. So it's important to understand how these can be different on a conventional loan versus an FHA. In general, conventional loans have the ability to lose that monthly mortgage insurance cost through the life of the loan. The cancellation of mortgage insurance, you know, it, it can drop off on a conventional loan. 
it's worth mentioning there are times when it has to stay on, like if payment history is not satisfactory or something like that. You know, there's requirements that we've got to meet. But usually with conventional, you do have that light at the end of the tunnel. FHA is different. FHA, you will have monthly mortgage insurance on your loan for the life of the loan. Unless with FHA, you do at least 10% down. If you do 10% down on FHA, that mortgage insurance, it will go away, but after 11 years. Uh, and again, you have to make good payments, right? So if payments start to get missed or something like that, you might see you know, the lender want to keep the mortgage insurance on longer. In general, again, conventional mortgage insurance has a strong chance to go away as long as you've got time, timely payments and whatnot. Whereas FHA, by and large, doing a minimum down payment, it's going to be on there for the life. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope I answered some of your questions about FHA loans versus conventional loans. If you have any other questions, please drop them in the comments. And then you're going to find my contact information and Paul's contact information in the description below. Thanks for watching.